Welcome back, everyone, to Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween. Now, I do hope everyone enjoyed last week's Night of the Demons double feature review, but since we're just a few days away from Halloween night at this point, I figured this video should uh, switch things up a little bit and give you a sort of uh, month-long roundup of the best and worst that we watched so far this month. Now, you can expect another final tally and possibly some catch-up videos next week. There have been a few conventions and we have missed a few days of our intended schedule. Anyway, bad news first. Now, the worst movies from this year's 31 Days are Poltergeist 2. Now, the original Poltergeist was an absolute classic, but this was, was kind of weirdly plotted with poorly written characters, a creepy maniac with gigantic teeth, and a magic Indian. Sequel kind of missed the boat. Mark of the Witch had a pretty interesting folk plot about a pair of witches dueling over their ideological differences, but the execution here was just botched by this overdone direction. Flashes of scenes and random frames from here or there, and I think if you sped up all the slow motion in the movie to normal speed, it'd probably be about 20 minutes short. Willow Creek is a found footage Bigfoot movie without Bigfoot in it. Or things that happen. The characterization and build-up is pretty decent, if a bit long, but what absolutely kills the pacing of this movie is this absurdly long, like, 15 or 20 minute long static shot of the leads in a tent at night freaking out over noises in the woods. Now, sound design, I think, is hugely important in horror, but this is a little too few and far between, so there will be upwards of one or two minutes of complete silence, during which you're basically just watching grainy footage of two people in a tent looking spooked. It was so uninteresting, and I checked out that by the time the movie actually wanted to try being scary, I was, I was gone. Fairlane Road. Now, between the stilted film school dramatic dialogue and the feeling that this movie was a shame to be a horror movie, a decent concept, I think, absolutely failed to land. But with that unpleasantness out of the way, let's take a look at this month's greatest hits. Most Likely to Die has an excellent masked slash with a creative design and some really nice and gory corpse displays. The movie is visceral, bloody, and fun, just like a good modern slasher should be, I think. Southbound. An anthology film with five short films all set on or around a somewhat literal highway to hell. Now rather than a framing story, each short has a, a little torch pass into the next one, which is pretty well done and kind of helps the movie feel cohesive as a whole. Uh, standout stories for me were the first story, third story, and the tale of the fifth. The Sacrament. This found footage documentary about an isolated cult delivers some very uncomfortable intense situations. It's thematically dark and disturbing, and I think what's most disturbing is that cults and events like these not only could happen, but I think have happened. A runner-up to the best of list is 8989 Redstone, which is about a home improvement reality show where a contractor and his daughter flip old, decrepit houses. Except the house they're trying to flip this time is actually haunted. Now, I was really amused here by the father's constant overreactions to the slightest hiccup. But the, uh, the setting was great, and there's some effective horror, and even some really good misdirects. But I do wish they had really committed to the spatial horror aspects they were hinting at in the early scenes, with uh, you know doorways that don't lead anywhere, insides of rooms being larger than the outsides of the rooms, uh, doorways and rooms completely vanishing and appearing in different areas of the house. That type of horror is just woefully underused in the genre as a whole, but I think it can be really effective. But what pulled this movie out of the best of list was the ending, which I thought kind of popped up out of nowhere and had no real connection to any of the established mythology. I'll give you guys the final rundown after Halloween, just in case we unearth a few more good flicks. But in the meantime, happy Halloween and enjoy your candy comas. Cheers! Cheers.